fasting helps the muscle. The fasting is, yes, you're tapping into glycogen in the muscle, but actually fasting increases growth hormone as well. Hi friends, in this week's episode of Bite Size Biohacks, we're going to just share with you a clip all about autophagy because I think a lot of people get this confused and many people are kind of under the illusion that if they're doing the 16-8 fast, they're achieving full cellular autophagy on a daily basis and that's actually not the case. And my guest, Dr. Joseph Antu, um, who is the CEO of Prolon, breaks this down really simply, kind of using the analogy of a company. Uh, that doesn't have sufficient funds and when it's on, under stress and how the uh, the CEO would need to restructure that company. And that's effectively what your body is doing when you're fasting for a long enough period of time. Um, it's helping with that cellular renewal. It's restructuring things within the body. And that's when you're moving into autophagy. But that doesn't happen as quickly as many people think. And certainly for women, there is the impact of female hormones. We also talk about how exercise is a really good tool for autophagy. Um, and how to optimize your part fasting period and how also to do something known as a molecular fast. So I'm just going to say uh, this snapshot of my interview with Dr. Joseph Anton really to give you a flavor of that because if you have listened already maybe you want to go back and listen again but if you haven't it's definitely an episode that I would recommend you listen to and it works super well in conjunction with this week's earlier episode where I interviewed Dr. Stacey Sims on how to optimize your exercise your fasting your nutrition particularly in the perimenopausal years but now let me share with you this this clip from my interview with Dr. Joseph Anton and if you want to listen to the full episode um, it's episode 181. People think yeah. fasting is a calorie deficit. There's only one angle. Probably the most important angle of how fasting works is a stress, is by stressing the body. Um, I always give the example of if you're a CEO of a company and you need a million dollars to operate, any low calorie diet will give you, say, $800,000. You can cope with that state. You have enough money in the bank exactly the fat and the glucagon, and you can adjust to it. But if I give you zero dollars instead of a million dollar, not only you're in a big deficit, but it's such a big stress that that CEO of the company has to restructure the company. And this is autophagy. So the stress-induced restructuring is exactly what happens to the body. And stress elevates cortisol, is why you're bringing the cortisol up as, within fasting and, their, and growth hormone, by the way, as well. Yeah. This is why fasting helps the muscle. The fasting is, yes, you're tapping into glycogen in the muscle, but actually uh, fasting increases growth hormone as well, and the muscle tone is high. This is why one of the ways now athletes are incorporating fasting into their training is to play on this duality of let's cut fat, protect the muscle, eat protein after fasting and train the muscle, and you get it cycles of rejuvenation and cycles of muscle enhancement. Oh, interesting. But cut the fat out. So you're saying focus on yeah. refueling with protein and carbs, but not fat. Yeah, if, if your goal is to build up muscle, you have to focus yeah. on the, if, if that's yeah, the goal. Yeah. I'm not talking about longevity. So we've just published a trial on Prolon. Uh, you mentioned we have a fasting mimicking nutrition. So uh, we did two trials on Prolon with muscle being a purpose. One, a gas Mediterranean diet, and it shows that we protect lean body mass. And then we went to athletes, male athletes. You know, these are big guys, and they train intensively. And they did five days of Prolon with no to low exercise during the five days. And we showed that they actually protected lean body mass. And that's the duality of fasting. Fasting taps into fat as a reserve tries to protect the muscle with the growth hormone, and especially when you do it with prolon, because we have already plant-based protein in prolon, we do have carbs. So you actually even have nutrients in the body to feed the muscle. And as a result, we see that muscle function is protected when you do the fasting mimicking diet. Interesting, yeah. And I, I wanna get into what's in that actually, because I think it's important for people in a moment. So if we just, staying with the principles, um, because I think it will be, you know, new to a lot of people that 16 hours is not enough to stimulate autophagy. I had always thought it was longer. I think the 16-8, no. as you say, works well for kind of managing metabolic flexibility to a degree. Yeah. What about exercise itself being a tool for autophagy? Yes. Because there's a lot of research now saying, well, hang on, let's see how many stresses we need to put the body through. But if we are stimulating autophagy through exercise, and you're a regular exercise and a vigorous exercise. Do you think that that is doing autophagy or do we still need to be fasting on top? So, you know, it, it, there's no sci-fi when we talk to the body and the body is a continuum. So basically autophagy 
is a cell self-eating, right? So it's a cell that had to go and eat and, and use inside calories because there's outside depletion. And that happens either with intensive exercise or prolonged, less intensive exercise. But if you're stopping every five minutes to eat a burger, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but if you do it long enough, and it's a balance, right? It's, it's either low food with mild exercise or high exercise with a little bit more food or no food and no exercise. It's the balance. And the duration of which you need depends on the body. If you're very thin, you don't have a lot of reserves, you have high metabolic rate, then you need less exercise to get into autophagy. And you need less period of fasting. You might get into autophagy you know, by hour 20 or by the end of the first day, very rarely, right? But again, if you're very, very thin, very high metabolic rate and you exercise while doing fasting, you get into autophagy a little bit sooner than the two days. If you're a little bit overweight, you have low metabolic rate, you don't burn fast your calories and, and, and your body is used to go on that slow mode and you don't exercise, it's going to take you three days to get into autophagy. So it's not sci-fi, it's literally okay. the speed of the crisis, the intensity of the yeah. crisis and how much reserves I have to compensate for it. Yeah, that's really interesting. Thanks for clearing that up because I guess that it makes a lot of sense because actually if the body recognizes that you're very low fat anyway, it's kind of a little bit more scared, right, almost, or should we say under more stress? Yeah. Because it's like, yeah. well, if there's some yeah. kind of famine, when, how are we going to feed? Exactly. Um, so go, go yeah. back to the, the example of that CEO who needs a million dollars to operate. If he has a hundred billion dollars in the bank and you tell him you don't have that million dollars today, he's like, okay, you know, I'll be $99 million in the bank. That's not a huge deal. But if he only has two million in the bank and half of it is wiped out, he's going to rush faster to restructure the company, to cut costs and to take the right corrective measures. Yeah. Okay. So could you then by sort of waking up in a fasted state where you can see on some sort of device, for example, um, that you're in a more of a fat burning state, go and exercise. And would that then be enough if you came home and refueled in a lean individual, an athletic individual to have stimulated autophagy for the purposes of longevity? Again, if uh, how long did you exercise, how long have, when you didn't eat, and how much reserves you have. So you got to measure each person is different. Autophagy happens every day, every moment in the body. It's a part of the cycle of cells, but we're talking about accelerating autophagy across all cells. Yes, if you're in a fat burning, if you're, say, in, in already in mild ketogenesis and you exercise intensively and you delete your food intake and you're thin and you have high metabolic rate, you will touch on autophagy. Again, we're talking autophagy. It's not like a minute process. It happens yes or no. Autophagy goes from super mild to more and more. The more the deficit, the longer the deficit, the longer it goes. So you don't want to also just touch on it. It's like we're bargaining whether it's 16 or 18 hours. Even if it happens at hour 16, it barely, barely started, right? If you want to benefit from it, you want to put your cells into it, you got to allow time to go and do a masterful autophagy around, around the body and push for more rejuvenation, regeneration. So even if you touch on it a little bit every morning, that's touching autophagy or accelerating a little bit the rate of autophagy across the body, but it's not going into a deep dive, you know, rejuvenative cycle within the body. Please know that while I try to cover as much information to help you as I can on these bite-sized episodes, none of the things I mentioned should be taken as a substitute for medical advice. And before taking any supplements or anything else, please consult first with your medical doctor.